everyone. Today we are going to see about buccal space infection. Before moving on to the topic, first we need to know the gist of the topic. Today what and all I am going to cover in buccal space infection is that I have given a gist of this. First we need to know the definition of the buccal space that is the extension where it is present we need to know and then we need to know about the boundaries of the buccal space. Next, what is the content in the buccal space? The muscle related to the buccal space and what are the neighboring spaces present? And then what is the teeth involved? What is the source of infection of this buccal space infection? And then the clinical features of this buccal space infection. Finally, the treatment. So, this is the gist I have given. You have to explain this headings in detail. It is very easy. If you have understood this gist, let's move on to the topic. First, what is the buccal space? It occupies the portion of subcutaneous space between facial skin and vaccinated muscle. Now see this diagram in this. This is the buccal space. That is, it is the portion of subcutaneous space between facial skin. This is the skin and subcutaneous tissue. And this is the vaccinated muscle. So, This is the vaccinated muscle. This is the skin and subcutaneous tissue. Here is the buccal space. In definition what you have to write is it occupies the portion of subcutaneous space between facial skin and vaccinated muscle. That is this space. This is known as the buccal space. Alright. So it is very simple. First you have to know about the definition of this buccal space. Understand this diagram so that you could write this extension easily. Now let's see about the boundaries of the buccal space. If you know the diagram, it is very easy to remember the boundaries or else it will be uh, tough for you to remember it. First, medially it is vaccinated muscle. Now, move on to the diagram. If you see in this diagram, medially you have vaccinated muscle. That is, this is the medial side. Alright, this is the medial side. Here you have vaccinated muscle medially. And what you have on the lateral side? This is the medial side. And what you have on the lateral side? Lateral side is the skin. Skin and subcutaneous tissue. This is lateral side. So, medially you have vaccinated muscle. And laterally you have skin. Isn't it easy? Now what you can see anteriorly and posteriorly. Let's see this diagram. This diagram. Where will be the vaccinator muscle? Here you will be having orbicularis oris muscle. Here you will be having orbicularis oris muscle and somewhere you will be having angular oris. Here you will be having the vaccinator muscle and here you will be having masseter muscle. 
Masseter Buxineter Now what you can see anteriorly is your angle of mouth Am I right? And posteriorly you can see the anterior border of masseter muscle. This is the anterior border of masseter. This is the masseter muscle. This is the anterior and posterior border of masseter. What you can see anteriorly is the angle of mouth. And posteriorly is the anterior border of masseter muscle. Medially you have to remember this diagram. That is... Medially, it is buccinator muscle and laterally, skin and subcutaneous tissue. Now, moving on to anteriorly and posteriorly. Remember this diagram. Anteriorly, you have angle of mouth. Posteriorly, you have anterior border of masseter muscle. Now, what you will have superiorly and inferiorly? Superiorly, you have zygomatic arch. Alright, superiorly you will be having zygomatic arch and inferiorly you are having inferior border of mandible. Alright, superiorly you will be having zygomatic arch. And inferiorly, you will be having inferior border of mandible. That's it. Boundaries is very simple. Let me tell you one more time. Anteriorly, remember this diagram. Anteriorly and posteriorly, you have to remember this diagram. That is, anteriorly you have angle of mouth. Posteriorly, you have anterior border of masseter muscle. Superiorly you have zygomatic arch. Inferiorly you have inferior border of mandible. Now what is in medially and laterally? Medially on the medial side you have buccinator muscle. Laterally you have skin and subcutaneous tissue. So these are the boundaries of buccal space. For all the space infections, you have to mention boundaries. Boundaries are a little bit tough for you. So if you practice with diagrams, it will be very easy for you and you don't have to mug up. You just have to see the diagram and you can write what is on anterior, posterior, medial, lateral, superior, inferior. These are the six things you have to mention in boundaries. Now let's move on to the Next heading that is content. What are the contents in the buccal space? You have buccal pad of fat. The second one is perotid duct. That is which is the perotid duct? Yes, Stinson's duct. An anterior transverse facial artery and vein. What are the contents? Only three contents. First one is the buccal part of fat. Second one is perotid duct, that is Stinson's duct. Third one is anterior transverse facial artery and vein. Next, what is the heading? The muscle related to the buccal space. What is the muscle related? We have already seen. That is buccinator muscle. Alright. Now, moving on to neighboring space. What are the neighboring spaces present to the buccal space? First is the canine space. What is the other name of canine space? Infraorbital space. A 
and next is the pterygomandibular space and third one is infratemporal space. These are the three spaces present near the buccal space. If you see in the diagram, it will be easy for you. If you see in this diagram, buccal space and near this you have the canine space. Here will be your canine space. So, neighboring space is the canine space. Then, infratemporal space. Somewhere it will be here. It is infratemporal space. And pterygomandibular space near this masseter. Right. You can see here, this is the masseter. And here will be the ramus. This is the pterygomandibular space. What are the three neighboring spaces? very easy that is canine space, pterygomandibular space and here it will be infratemporal space. These are the three neighboring spaces of buccal space. Next, what is the teeth involved? Maxillary and mandibular, premolars and molars. Both you can write maxilla and mandible mandibular, premolars and molars. These are the teeth involved in this buccal space infection. And what is the cause of the infection? What may be the source of this infection? You have to write uh, because of what this infection might happen. So what is the source of the infection? Molar infection or premolar infection originating and perforating buccal cortical plate Above origin of buccinator muscle in maxilla or below the buccinator muscle in mandible. If you see in this, if any infection to premolar or molar tooth, if there is infection and it might extend above the buccinator muscle and it causes the infection here, that is the buccal space infection. Now what are the clinical features present? Just you have to remember the three clinical features. It is very easy. One is the dome shaped swelling. Where? Where will be the swelling? You will have it on the cheek. Dome shaped swelling on the anterior aspect of cheek. You have to mention this. This is very important. Very important unique clinical feature. That is the dome shaped swelling on anterior aspect of cheek extending from where it extends the swelling extension you have to mention it extends from lower border of mandible downwards and upwards to zygomatic arch you have to mention this extension okay what is this it is the dome shaped swelling on the anterior aspect of cheek extending from lower border of mandible Upwards to the zygomatic arch. And next one is the obliteration of nasolabial fold. Same as canine space infection, there will be obliteration of nasolabial fold and angle of mouth shifted to opposite side. Same as canine space infection. We have already saw. That is, there will be angle of mouth shifted to opposite side and obliteration of nasolabial fold. These are the three clinical features, important clinical features. If you write this three, it is sufficient. Now, finally, we have to write treatment. What is the treatment? It is very simple. I have told you previously, for all facial space infections, you just have to mention the incision and drainage. It is the common treatment for all these space infections. Now, 
in this buccal space infection, you can do incision either intraorally or extraorally. Okay, if you are doing it intraorally, that is, if you are doing it intraorally, then you have to place horizontal incision above the depth of the vestibule. After the drain is placed, pus will be evacuated and it is sutured. Normal same procedure. And if you are doing it extraorally, it should be done below the lower border of mandible. Let me recall you. What and all we have learnt? First, what is the definition? Then boundaries, then content, muscle related, neighboring space, and what are the teeth involved? What is the source of this infection? And what are the clinical features and treatment of buccal space infection? If you remember these two diagrams, it is very easy for you to write the boundaries. Boundaries is where you find it difficult in remembering. If you remember this diagram, then you can write the boundaries and clinical features treatment are very simple. That's all about buccal space infection. If you like the video, hit the like button, share this video and subscribe my channel. If you have any queries, comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Thank you.